right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Van Chats. I'm sitting here with Johnny Whale, Jacob Tipper, who's just joined in in the last minute, Dan Bigham, and Ashton Lambie. Um, yeah, everybody's been on the podcast at least once, except for Jacob and Ashton. But essentially, this podcast is where we're just pretty much going to shit talk each other's training, uh, talk about New Year's resolutions, where we're all going to try to lose five pounds and uh, go keto. And uh, yeah, let's let's just dive into it with Johnny. Uh, he's in Tannerif training with Jacob, it looks like, and uh, getting ready for what What are you getting ready for? What are you training for? Well, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I'm uh, doing the Nations Cup in Newport is my main target. Um, and then potentially, if I'm a good boy, I get to do Euros in June and then Worlds in October. But I've got to cycle my bicycle fast first. So Newport. What about you, Jacob? What are you, what are you, what are you doing out there? Are you just trying to keep Johnny's training honest or can you not hear me? <laughs> it's a, it's pretty hard to keep Johnny's training honest from 10 minutes behind on the, on the climbs. Um, in theory, I'm training for the domestic calendar that's going to start in the UK in March, but realistically it's probably going to start in about July looking at what a, uh, what a nightmare it is in the UK right now. So yeah, just kind of trying to bury my head in the sand and prepare pretend oh it's gonna be good and yeah we're gonna start right oh there we just lost our wi-fi i guess so i can tell you all the tippers plans <laughs> yeah yeah so so dan i see you're, you're yeah. looking well, festive right now oh, is he coming yeah back? yeah always you're looking festive christmas. now so so what's going on in your neck of the woods man um celebrating christmas because i'm not in tenerife uh where the plan is to get out there in two weeks time but as you probably well know, COVID's gone wild in the UK. So yeah, um, yeah we're just just waiting because we're banned from traveling to any other country at the moment. So Tipper and Johnny got pretty lucky. I think Tipper's about to fly over to Spain tomorrow, basically staying out of the UK because you can't touch it and then I should not get anywhere. Um, yes. So did they did they go ahead and decide that trade teams are back in on these Nations Cups? I mean, are you guys doing like some secret training camp and just not talking about it because <laughs> everything's got to be a secret with you guys? One thing I'm not doing is running a trade team, oh, like yeah. herding cats. Um, my training has improved infinitely since I've not had to organize and live with all those fuckers. So, um, yeah. I think that goes for everyone. I think it, it's the <laughs> ironic thing that everyone on the team is going better than they were when they were on the team. Um, yeah. The four yeah, lads from Derby scenario maybe wasn't so optimal. <laughs> <laughs> it was good to a point and then suddenly it's like really frustrating live with everyone so um no we're not organizing a trade team although it seems like everyone's going to be at, New at newport um because will has just uh blagged himself arrived with the new irish trade team kyle's back with scottish cycling who also a trade team uh john's invisible we don't know where he's gone um johnny's obviously riding with the gb kidney wings because he's under 23 ashton won't be able to ride because obviously he's not fast enough. Um, he's only the second fastest American IP rider these days. So, um, and he, no he, he, does, he has a moustache. Apparently, the entry requirements are no moustaches. Uh, he's taken a moral stance on it. Um, I don't know what you guys would do, but shave the moustache, continue your career, or keep the moustache. I mean, it's kind of a, a brand. You have your own Instagram page for your moustache. So, yeah. yeah. I have no a idea who runs it. For you. Yeah. Uh -huh. it is. You've got no idea. It's definitely you. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's, he's that famous, guys. He doesn't know who's running the, uh, the the mustache page yet. But speaking of that, so what what have you been what have you been up to? What have you been doing? Because it's like you kind of went off the grid and you started the gravel. What is it? Gravel knots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you started the gravel knots. Um, what is what does track look like for you? Because obviously you're not starting a trade team, so it sounds like you don't have a team to ride for yeah i mean uh yeah hopefully newport um if not that you know hong kong uh and try to get to worlds again this year yeah <clears throat> um other than that i that's that's pretty much all i've got for track it'll be uh that and then a whole bunch of gravel um you know the the whole thing with bolivia like i don't i think that kind of hit a bit of a wall with like their government having a bunch of problems and then uh yeah, I don't know. We'll kind of see how it goes. Yeah, we're talking about that guy. keep messaging all the time. Like, I, I speak to them at least once a month. And I, I'm not going proactive with it. They're always like, hey, Dan. Oh, no, and only like, hey, Mr. Dan or something. Mr. Like Bingham, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and they're like, 
uh, what the plans are actually. They've got it all approved again for 2021 to put an event on. But obviously, it's like you can't travel there. We no one can travel anywhere. They've got their COVID quarantine center at the track. It's all a bit silly. Um, but I mean, on the positive side, like we know all the connections now, so we know who to book at the hotel, who's the timekeeper, who's the commissaire, how much it's going to cost. So you probably organise it at a drop of a hat, but it's uh, just a bit of a nightmare to do right now. So fingers crossed. COVID disappears in like two weeks time and then um, I'll go up and break every record by myself. Sorry, Johnny, Tipper, everyone. It's a yeah, classic we'll technique that is, it's uh, selecting yourself. <laughs> That's why he ran the team, man. So you select the teams. So, yeah, I'll pick uh, the team. Dan Bigham, man one. Dan Bigham, man two. <laughs> this is, I, don't know, I don't know if we mentioned this before, but this was, um, we were having a conversation about the optimal team pursuit team. So if you had to make if I came up with this idea, you guys won't know, but there's like the Indian Premier League is like a sort of IPL. It's a, like a cricket thing, 2020. They do in India, like, and you basically get all the best cricketers in the world come and they like, you get auctioned and they get bought for teams and they play, you know, you get like random collections of, you know, international cricketers all playing together. But I thought it'd be a cool idea to do that for Team Pursuit where you'd have like, you know, you come, you meet up, you do two weeks training together and it can be like, you know, a couple of, two, an Aussie, a GB rider, a French dude and like a, I don't know, a Bahrainian man. You're like fucking anyone it's like you know uh, names in a hat jobby and then you've got to find the best strategy around those riders to race and but yeah so we, we were talking about this anyway we we're like who's the best what would be your optimum lineup and um daniel went for uh dan bingham at man one dan bingham at man two rapture at man three and piggy at man four um but it's still like what he literally sort of like said this and he just paused and he was like hmm yeah we'd go real fast <laughs> <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of record breaking though, so so Dowsett, did you guys actually think he was going to break the hour? No. I didn't, that's a, I, I that's a hard he, no for me. Um. <laughs> I think he'd be hard pressed to. It's not impossible. At the end of the day, he's pretty good. Um, yeah. He's already heard the hour, etc. But from where he was, he hadn't, as far as we knew anyway, he hadn't ridden the track uh, when he had announced he was going for the hour. He'd asked to borrow my bike. Then he asked to borrow John's bike. Um, so I don't think he had a bike at the time. I think, well, it's, I don't know who said it, but it's um, how many successful hour record holders didn't have a track bike a month before they went for their attempt? I mean, I think that, that that's, yeah. Well, I didn't even know that. That's bold. Yeah. That's bold. I, he probably could do it, though. He just needs to spend a whole lot of time doing prepping for it. Uh because it's not, I don't think it's something you can really wing. Like Campanarts did how many months in Namibia or wherever it was at altitude? Four or and five then months. He sacked off like half a year to yeah. go for it. Knock 500 I mean, I'm not convinced up. that's probably the best strategy. But yeah, it's you need to focus on it specifically. And obviously, he's uh, in a World Tour team. So he's, you know, he's paid to do other stuff. And the hour record is not something they're interested in. I think the fact that Campanarts was struggling to get a contract, even though he was the current our record holder just shows the value that the our record has for a commercial angle. Um, it's very much a labor of love that we like watching. Yeah. <clears throat> no, so so speaking of that, Lambie, are you going to try to go for the hour? I mean, being that we probably won't be able to race any team pursuits or anything like that, you could probably convince them to let you train on the track if you go for the hour. Yeah, uh, that's actually something I've definitely been training for. Um, yeah, we'll, I'm... Uh, you know, I'm like talking with Bolivia and hopefully, you know, tag on with that or um, go down to Aguas or even Colorado Springs and do it. Just depending so, yeah. on what happens. You so do you know that on the, oh, sorry. So you wow. Know the, go ahead. Do you know the hour uh, on the track is actually measured from the black, not what line you actually you yes, ride? You. Like, <laughs> I'd love to see yes. the pace of that as well. Goes down that 65k an hour. Like, I'm yeah, <laughs> Wow. Well, start, at well. start at 70 start at 70 and just end at 59 like, yeah get down into the 55s there near at the end there yeah. will be 14s in there a <laughs> couple of 14s you gotta give yourself a buffer for the end of the race That's the a key. buffer yeah and also don't forget because you if you do it at altitude then the laws of physics don't actually apply so you can you can mm. go off hotter and the magic fairies will reduce your cda to the point that it doesn't just matter. coast yeah, yeah, just exactly. coast the whole second half. Well now, well, now that I got all you guys here, I have to know, because, like, my first impression of Ashton was – and this might, this might turn into oh, a God. podcast of just – Was it negative? Ashton. 
Uh, no, it was just interesting. He's just like, he's so green. Um, like when he came in, he was just like, very like, what do I do? Where do I go? Uh, huh? And just staring at the walls and whatever else. Um, but how did he, how did he like get hooked up with you guys? Like, did you message him? Did he slide in your DMs? Who hit on who first? How did he end up with you guys? Only sent a few dick pics and before you know it, Ashton's over. Um... <laughs> I can confirm I have seen said dick pics. <laughs> uh, it was his dad. Air. His dad arranged yeah, his dad. the date. <laughs> his dad's dick pics. Shut up. That's yeah, because No, yeah. Marv got talking with, uh, who was it? One of the marketing guys when it was. Michael Fallon. That's yeah, and, Fallon, Fallon, and Milton. Fallon. Yeah, man. He ended up sitting next to him in the stands in Milton. I think that would have been the winter of 2018, like the second World Cup we did there. So your dad caused an arranged marriage. That's yeah, cool. and then Johnny. I think technic technically, you guys had done really well at, uh, at one of these, uh, what they're called, Pan Am champ things. You'd done like a silly time at altitude. And then I think there was a slight loss of morale when you didn't go sub four in that World Cup. Um, and there were some toys thrown out the pram. And so you decided to abandon your country and join a bunch of ragtag pirates. Yes. <laughs> and go around the world to exactly World it. Cups. <laughs> well, because you, you messaged me just like out of the blue. I remember like waking up and you were just like, hey, you want to come to Berlin? I just woke up. Yeah, can you give me like like an hour to figure this out? No. <laughs> no, we need to know now. <laughs> we we so have slid in many, many professional cyclist DMs. Um, have you? Which, what's, what's, what's another professional cyclist DMs that you've slid into? Nia's? Uh, Tampa Knots. Tampa Um uh, who else? Cameron Scott. I tried to get him when he got uh, killed from Australia cycling. Um, the French dude that's now a super in influencer, whatever his name is. Uh, oh, he's now a as well. Yeah, well, he was, well, he was, he was European. Yeah, Quentin. Blah, 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 blah. He was European IP champion. And then oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> six months later, yeah, he, he got third of the world. What's this dude's name? I can't remember his name. Uh, I can't no, remember, I remember his name. Quentin yeah, Quentin yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah. dad's like super famous as well. The Irmano, so we probably should have remembered that one. <laughs> but yeah, um, loved his Instagram, loves a selfie, and loves speaking to the camera. Mm, so he'd have been perfect. Yeah, he would have fit in well. He'd have balanced you out. Good bit of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I just assume that's what all French people are like. Like they all just <laughs> sit next to a pool and sunglasses, drinking champagne like all the time. I just thought that's what France was like. And wearing Adidas, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that was just him. Yeah, well, I think it's, yeah, I think it's it. some very questionable gym activities. Mm. Um, so, being that you guys are in Tannery for right now, Johnny, who do you think out of out of out of the other guys who aren't in Tannery, who has the shitty training program right now, and why? Who has the worst training program? Yeah. Um, well, considering Ashton just said that he wants he's training currently training for the hour record, and he spent the best part of four months doing three gym sessions a week and not riding his bike. I think he probably has the worst training program. I mean, I, right. I mean, I mean I'm, not, I'm no expert, but apparently <laughs> the hour record is a very, very aerobic event that rewards consistency of high volume. So three or four gym sessions a week lifting heavy is probably what you shouldn't do, would be my suggestion. But, but you know, these things change. I mean, I'm yeah. no coach. There's, there's a lot of coaches on this phone call. So we, should we hear from Jacob to performance coaching? Yeah, so I, say, yeah. I, I, say, I think Dan's got the best training <clears throat> at the moment. So uh, Dan has the best training out of everyone because um, he's chosen Tipper as his chosen one. Um, Tipper is in charge of Dan. Really? Okay, how'd you like that world? Um, oh, there's, wow. there's, a, there's a switcheroo for you. Um, and unfortunately, Dan's funny. going really well. So, uh, In fairness, based on the fact that Dan found me about two watts in aero, as long as I can beat that in physiology, that makes me a better physiologist than him in aerodynamics. It's, it's, it's kind of an easy win for Tipper, though, because it's like, Dan, just ride your bike more than twice a week and you'll go faster. So he's, he's pretty rocket science, that one. It's, he's done well. Um, <clears throat> apparently, there's gains in this training thing. Um, that Dan it's is actually just all aerodynamics. Like, honestly, I'm not putting any more power out. I'm just more aero. <laughs> <laughs> right it's on. So <clears throat> let's, let's just go ahead, because we're, we're entering the new year in two days. And in, in, in the US, everybody has resolutions that nobody fucking sticks to um so let's let's just go around the boat um ashton we'll even start with or no dan we'll start with you we'll just go down 
and then go across. Okay, and... New Year's resolutions or yeah, targets? Yeah, let's hear it, man. Targets, ambitions, resolutions, the whole lot? Yeah, yeah, let's hear it all. Like 2021, let's just as, say as, the vaccine As a member works. of the organizing party, can I remind you that things are under embargo, Daniel? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Um, win everything and break loads of records. Um, I'll go with that. It's normally like the ball strike. Fairly standard. Yeah. Uh, probably put it on Facebook somewhere, like all the races that I want to win mm. and like mm. the times I'd like to do. I've done and in the I think what you should do is right? you should launch a trade team in one of the most competitive years before the Olympics. And as part of the sort of the, the launch party we have is you say that we're going to win everything. Um, that, w- that would go down well with people, I think. Yeah, but you should come up with those goals on your own and not contact any of your team members <laughs> when you make those. Well, it's individual um, pursuits at every World Cup now. So I just register as a trade team and away I go. Or Nations Cup. Yeah. I'll see you there, Ashton. Sorry, mate. No great package for Newport. In fact, you're not even riding anyway. You're just a masseuse now or something. I'm, I'm probably not even going to go, it sounds like. He's, he's, he's being upgraded. <laughs> I'm old news. Uh, resolutions, resolutions. I don't know. Um, keep training hard. Hmm. All about that grunt. <laughs> All right, Jacob, let's hear it, man. Uh, oh, New Do some intervals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New Year's resolutions or goals or ambitions. We're going to enter 2021 with the right attitude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might, might be asking the wrong person. You might be asking, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's barking <laughs> at the wrong tree. We're never going just, to win. Yeah, <laughs> just, just hoping the season isn't terrible and we have a season would be great. All right, Calvin. Um, yeah, uh, Tour of Britain would be the uh, grand ambition if, uh, if it happened. Uh, and the new re- New Year's resolutions and um, resolution, uh, don't really know. Um, eat less chocolate, eat less kebabs, um, eat less of the stuff that Johnny doesn't eat, and then yeah, should be on for it. Apart from animals, I still don't eat animals. She won't. Yeah. To be fair, like I think you guys should probably get some background in that. I think uh, so. Maybe the last time me and Tipper rode with each other, I was very very average, um, mm. and now I've done a significant amount of training over the last two years, and I've got better. And I don't think. Won't. Trading works. Not gone down well. Trading works. Um, I am now a light, now. lean climbing goat. No, I train myself. Okay. Um, I make it up on the go. It, it works well. It works well for him. It, it works not well work for him. For the, for the rest of us. <laughs> you see, not, there's, nice, there's, nice steady ride there's been some confusion as to the structure and the nature of the rides we've been doing here. Um, so I've got this philosophy where I work out what fish, Japanese, like high end Japanese sushi restaurants, they'll have like, the head chef will have done this for, you know, 50, 60 years. And um, you'll have a repertoire of maybe 800 dishes. And then the strategy is you go to the market in the morning and you find what the best fish is of that day. And you make the best dish that you can out of the best ingredients you've got. So I kind of like that. Um, so I do it in my training and I sort of ride for a bit and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go real hard today. Um, but it, I, I haven't really communicated that too well with the uh, people I'm supposed to be riding with slash I think there's been some confusion, so I kind of go a bit rogue. We had a fun one this morning, which was we're going to ride up the first climb nice and steady, and after about 30 seconds, Johnny attacked, and the girls chased after him, and I was by myself, and I wasn't very happy. By the time we caught up with Johnny, stood on the side of the road, adjusting his cleats or saddle or whatever he likes to adjust every single ride. And sprinted past me. If if he's not waiting for me, I'm not waiting for him. And I rode off. There was a lot of toys thrown out of Rams. There's a lot of toys (laughs) scattered across Tenerife. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's not very environmentally friendly so maybe that can be a resolution for next year be more environmentally friendly oh, yeah. um, no toys being thrown but it was good, I had a good session I got waved at by Kevin Reza and his pals, he's got two other amigos um, I do not know who they are but that was nice wait, Sorry. was that your resolution though? Did, I feel like we went from Tipper's resolution straight into your training <laughs> well <laughs> We, I was just helping him because he's struggling. Really? You see. <laughs> so what's, what's your resolutions, Johnny? Um, my new year, say me. Um, oh, yeah. Not a big fan of the resolutions. Um, Read yeah. my book. That can be a resolution. Uh, no one. Okay, so Dan's got this book coming out. Um, <clears throat> me, myself, and I by Dan Bingham. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> Nobody should buy it, is my suggestion. Um, I think it's probably, I, I, I will only listen to it if it's read by Dan Bingham as an audiobook. Wait, is I this think that's, real? That's the, yeah, this is the real yeah. thing. You have a real book coming out. Yes. The chip book. Yeah, yeah. The chip book. I wrote it and everything. 
Uh-huh. How did that not come up? Oh my god! Yeah, how has that not come up at all? Uh, He's really embarrassed about it because right. what can a person write a book? <laughs> 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 for the for the benefit of the listeners, uh, Dan has gone bright red. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But let's, wow. Let's hear about this. It's, 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 pause on the resolutions because we gotta we gotta talk about this book now. Because I'm gonna read it. Also, we, maybe are we allowed to talk about this? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah, we're allowed to talk yeah. about it. Uh, to anyway. Okay, rewind like 18 months. <clears throat> um, right, we get a lot of emails in the team account from like I'd say fairly random people. Some of them turn out to be great some are not so great um i mean we get a lot of like anti-doping lawyers or doping lawyers <laughs> real like like, like <laughs> in what way <laughs> like saying hey like, i'm here to uh, if you, you fail the test i can like help you get out and you're like and it, it must go into some uci mailing list or something um i think jack gets the same ones and even's road team but anyway <laughs> side point so, um we've got an email from a guy called james spackman who runs a literary literary agency so basically for authors and writers and whatever uh, and you've just interested in the team, big cyclist, blah, blah, blah. Sent us quite literally hundreds of books uh, to get through training camps and stuff. I've read most of them. Uh, we've got like five of pretty much every cycling book in the world. Dan um, read about five books on building his self-confidence. <laughs> this is a real thing, everyone. <laughs> and how to write a book. <laughs> how to write a book. He's conquered uh, his lack of confidence and he's now writing his own book. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway james propositioned the idea about 12 months ago that uh we should just do a book on the story of the team uh and then that it became like a proper proposition that got sent to a load of publishers uh a few offers back one from a really interesting publisher called wellback they're a bit like left field not very mainstream just like doing a bit weird cool books um but they said don't do it as like just the chronology so don't do basically the life and times of Dan Bigham uh, and the team, because that'll be a bit boring because everyone's heard the story before. I disagreed, um, but anyway. Um, so yeah. <laughs> what we did is kind of take the first year of the track team, plus a bit either side, um, and tried to like take all the lessons from it. So from like an engineering perspective, how do you solve the problem? Like Jacob Tipper not being able to get around is quite a key one in the story. Um, He's not smiling because he's not enjoying this memory. Well, Ollie, please slide into the DMs with suggestions. I, mean, I, I, I thought we could have done how to not get robbed. Don't have an Audi outside your car, outside your house, and leave all your bikes in the shed. That was a good one. Could have just done yeah, so that. that. That was a crap explanation of what it is. But the long and short of it is, we're setting up a track team. How do you go and win a World Cup? Uh, and what was the process that we went through? And how can that help people? So, is the name of the book actually Dan, myself, and I? No. I, I, I am the one and only by Dan Bigham. <laughs> my my, right. my struggle, a tale of Dan Bigham's life. <laughs> so is there going to be four words from everyone? Like, you know, a little bit a little bit of word from Johnny, like like mid-chapter, it's just like Johnny's thoughts on this chapter. Uh, they've all been interviewed. I think, yeah, I think you've the, all been interviewed. The, yeah. in, the interviewer did not like any of my suggestions. Um, <laughs> just rewrote everything for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, it was um, I don't think he was, it was, what he was wanted me to say, shall we say? Um, but did I joke aside? I think it's. Um, I do take the piss, but I think it might be quite interesting. Um, but I am refusing to read it. So audio book, please, Dan. Well, it's funny that one of the first times when I got when I got Johnny on the podcast, um, I pretty much was like, "Hey, like, what can we not talk about?" And he was like, "Do not ask me how the team started, where the team comes from. Like, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to talk about it." And I was just boring. like, that makes sense. I don't really want to talk about that either. I already have that, already have that well played out. But yeah, I mean, I could I see Google is fantastic. Just use it, guys. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say we 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 didn't we didn't do any of the things we said we would talk about. Um, yeah. Well, well, what was another thing that we were saying we were going to talk about? Well, I, we did want to talk about the Magnus Sheffield. Uh, let's just dive into. So it. this is um, the guy, American kid who just did a three o. Uh, Seven? Uh, it's three oh six or three oh five. I keep getting. But it he would have done a two fifty nine in uh, altitude. You have a second. So, was it altitude? Dan, I, I, he was for, at altitude. Yeah. For a second, oh, I, oh, I was really. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> altitude don't count. Does the second best IP rider in USA have a comment he wishes to say? Um, hold on one oh, second. I mean, Give me a second. Oh oh oh. So I'm I'm just pulling up the time. You guys can chat. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so 3,000 meters, 
uh, let's say uh, 105 opened in a 21A. How much does this kid weigh? 76 kilos, fairly standard. Da, da, da. Probably not very aero. Oh, that's Could standard. Quite aero, who knows? Oh, do you see? He, he had fair set up on him. <clears throat> I, I think we should start this this bashing of this guy. I think it's a bit unmean. <laughs> um, but we should start it by saying I've got a lot of respect for what he did. Like, for someone of his age to, like, um, go out there and get it done himself. I've got, you know, chapeau for that. Do you want to buy your skin suit off him or something? <laughs> well, <to> be... <laughs> well I, 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 like, like the BBC, we want to be balanced in everything we say. That might actually be a bit illegal because I think he's under the age 18, right? Junior record, you're asking for a skin suit. Is right now 16 okay. in the UK is fine. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Spain, so it's actually 13. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> oh. So he wrote, he wrote a 306-447. Um, 306, 447. Do you have his opening lap time? I want to say it was hot, like 25. He went off hot because his altitude, so it just gives you the free speed. He went off hot, stayed hot, and then gradually got cooler. <laughs> okay, 21 <laughs> six. Uh What's the elevation? 1,800, isn't it? No. Yeah, about 1,800 meters. Oh, yeah, 1,800. I thought you said 800. Or 1,800. How hot is it there? <laughs> Uh, it was it was pretty hot on the day. It was probably seventy degrees. So what is that in Celsius? They heated up the track. <laughs> they heated up the track. Um, 26, 27, We'll go with that. Yeah. Did he pay to heat up the track, or did they do it for him? <clears throat> they probably did. It. I think I think the basis that we're annoyed about this story is the uh, <clears throat> to quote my big pal George Orwell: um, "All animals are equal. Some animals are more equal, and some other members of the USA." cycling fraternity have been given more of less opportunities than he seems to be given doors have opened where they potentially shouldn't have or <clears throat> maybe we should just open all the doors um, and that that's almost going to dive us into our next chat of just what do you guys think of the new oda academy in oh America wow right now mm, that looks good that's pretty crazy huh? if you've got a lot of money and rich parents i think it sounds amazing Hey, it's equality. We're trying to fight for equality right now. Yeah. Anyways, let's let's continue with this. Uh, with uh, with yeah. So I think the, the interesting one on that is, is isn't the the NBA guy. Some you'll know his name. That's another chairman. Um, oh, Reggie Miller. Of, yeah, that guy. So like, I remember reading an article about him coming in and saying that, you know, because equality in cycling is, you know, that's twenty twenty one. That's what everyone's striving for. And there's a lot of people doing some really good stuff for that. Mm. Um, but it seemed odd that. He came on under that mandate, and then all of a sudden they're charging people a small fortune to be able to do it, um, yeah. which I just think is wrong. But I think potentially there needs to be a second step in the ladder of the creation of some sort of scholarship scheme whereby talented athletes who do not have the fortune to have, you know, A, the money to pay for it, and B, the kit. Like, I think it's, a, it's kind of unfair for a lot of people where you need to have 10K worth of bike to compete um so if you don't you don't have the kit you can't go fast you don't get into the system um i think it's it's a very very backward step for junior cycling um as much as i love and we love all the aero nerdy kit i think uh, some sort of equality on performance for juniors would be very beneficial um for the political <laughs> no yeah yeah but, no, but if they had to, it, like it's wonderful i get it it's a great idea it's something that wasn't there now it's there um but also have a have a way for people that can't afford it to get in um, and be very, very transparent about how people are being picked as well, I would say. Because you get a lot of scenarios where if, I don't know, Tipper's family says, we'll give you an extra 10K, will you, will you put them on? And maybe they will. Um, yeah, it's, it's... I don't know where my mom's got that 10K from. Yeah, Mandy's, Mandy <laughs> is not uh, committing to Tipper cycling, unfortunately. <laughs> we've, we, we've asked. <laughs> But yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? The whole <laughs> asking of money, though, because like in the UK, it's never been a thing. Like you're not allowed to pay your way to a race because it's not really fair. And I think that's something they've always said. Like they might not send people to races, even if someone offers. Like some rich parent says, "All right, I'll take my kid to the European under 15 cross champs or whatever, and I take your pick of some random race." But it's not fair because it's not an equal opportunity for somebody else. And I think in the UK, at least, like you'd get slated if they did start doing that. But in America, it seems fair game to to throw a load of cash at the problem. But I guess if you don't have the funding, then you've got to find the money from somewhere, right? But I yeah. just think it, I feel it's like going to throw a lot of kids over. That's the bigger problem, too, is I think that uh, usually cycling is just, like, just broke. Like, yeah. 
if you don't have the money to run a junior program, it's like, okay, well, people can either pay to do the junior junior program or there's just no junior program. Yeah. Like it sucks, but there's also, you know, I don't know that there's what a better solution is. Yeah. My only issue with the whole thing is, is that there's no standard, right? So like the only standard is, is if you have 10 and a half. Yeah. Right? Like that's there's, the standard. Like if you can pay it, you can go, but it doesn't matter if you're talented or not talented. Maybe if you get a scholarship, like if they're going to start funding a little bit of money into you, then yeah, you have to have some sort of talent or whatever. But I just think that it's really an opportunity for kids to go, Oh, I like it or I don't like it. Thanks mom. Like, actually I do want to do the work. I don't want to do the work. Yeah. And so that's my only issue with it. Is it kind of, it, it's kind of a smack in the face to the guys like, even myself, you know, I'm not that great, but yeah, I paid for my way to be here in Colorado Springs. I paid for my way to go to things and I, but I, I did the work to get where I'm at. Um, so what happens at nationals or in a 4k when Ashton does win and ODA gets third, do you send ODA because he's paying $21,000 a year to be a part of this program? But yeah, anyways, you've got let's... to set the standards straight off the bat, though, right? You've got to yeah. say, if you are paying, this is what you're entitled to, this is what you're not entitled to, this is how we'll select. You won't, you will or won't be prejudiced for not paying cash because that's the problem, right? If you're paying money, then you feel like you're entitled to it. And that's mm -hmm. hard. Someone's getting paid into a corner. And if it's all behind closed doors, then yeah, shit will start hitting the fan. And that's the biggest thing in the UK, anyway, when basically selection committees meet. No one knows what data goes in, what discussions are made and why the decisions are made. They're just made and you, you can't really question it. You don't know what happens in that big black box and it's been crap for us, but then suddenly you throw in a load of cash as well at the same time. Can right? you arbitrate so, it? Uh, you can, what can you do? You can appeal and get feedback, but most of the time they just say, no, we're not going to give you feedback. We don't have feedback. Because you in America, right, mm. you can arbitrate it. I mean, it doesn't look good if you do it, but I mean, it's happened. People do it. Um, has, has anyone like done that, appealed, and then actually got in though? How does that work in a long-term career? That, I haven't done the research, but I know there was a big, um, with Amber Nieben, and this was the only time that I've seen an arbitration go through where I've been like, hmm, this is actually interesting. With Kristen Armstrong. Kristen Armstrong had won the Olympics twice um, at the point, but she, Amber Nieben won at nationals. So the argument was, is who do you send to Rio? And it was the most recent race. And so they picked Kristen Armstrong. Well, the argument was, was like, well, Jim Miller's her coach and Jim Miller this and Jim Miller that. When in reality, it's like, well, she's reigning, you know, Olympic champion too. So she might have lost on the day, but. What, what do you do right and how do you how do you go about or was it amber neven i don't think it was amber neven i don't need to look it up but um um it was well, this, this, this is a different Small. question this is selection this is how do you select for an event which is well that's pretty tricky because it's do you um i think the one thing we've learned who bought bike that we didn't took for granted in the kjf days is that this whole peaking for an event is very much a thing um especially team events but if it's an ip it's different it's um and even look at Ashton's IP that he did in a uh, world. Like he did significantly better for that because he didn't have to do all the team pursuit stuff before. He didn't have like to do selection for the I for you guys team pursuits and stuff. All he focused on was that one event that he was pre-selected for. No, no bullshit hoops to jump through. Happy days. Did a really good performance. Um, and if you want to get that 100% performance on race day, I think you need very, very early pre-selection of that. But um, where's the fairness in that? Um, so you, as long as you have a I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of pre-selecting months, months in advance. I think that's the best way. Well, they, they do that with but, you guys, don't they? Like in, in theory, mm, that's how you know you're going to. Yes and no. Um, yes and no. Varies. Event to event. I think if you're a big dog, so like if you're Jack Garen Thomas or even Dowsett can say it, I think it can be like, I want to target this race. And they can pretty much give you a yes or a no months in advance. Because mm. if you get three months of notice, you can be like, right, I'm all in. I'm going for it. Whereas if you get typically like three or four weeks notice it's suddenly it's a bit knee jerk and you haven't done everything perfectly you don't really have the time to get everything dialed they used to um, do camps for us for the event well then that's, yeah, that's we the dilemma that's are you selecting someone their ability to train or yeah. are you selecting on someone their ability to race we would, um, we would get we would almost get selected the month into the event so we would like plane tickets would get bought 
like and that's when out. you knew you were going. That's when you knew you were going. Mm. Yeah. But I think that's different. That's selecting a squad rather than selecting a riders. I think that the selection of a squad, like a team suit squad, I think that happens organically within the event. I think it's very, very rare that you actually have two riders that you're like, mm, which one should we, when it's looking objectively. Um, and it's having a squad is, you know, you, if you select out, you know, if you select from a month out with five riders, then, you know, you, you, you let's be honest, we, you, you guys knew who the best four was, didn't you? As a, uh, as a team? No, I knew who the best, I could, I could guess two. I could go, I could go with two and always guarantee two. I, I know Lambie was always good on the day and I knew Gavin yeah. was always pretty good on the day. Um, but past that, everybody was a bit different depending on their race schedules um well there we go exactly that's it's um yeah it's, it's very very tricky if you, it's hard to get four riders to go well on the same day and to do that yeah. you need pre-selection yeah so so this is obviously the issue other sports will have just you know for, for swimming it will be whoever wins nationals whoever does this time they're the ones that get in but obviously like that can cause problems with people not going well on those dates or like underperforming like where it doesn't really matter because you're six months six months out of competition um so gb leave it open to be able to basically go well look we do know who's going to be best in the day so we'll pick them but then it means they put all these little clauses in the basis that realistically say we can pick who we want which then means it's not possible for us to kind of appeal and say oh but, but we've met a criteria because the criteria is, is basically open for them to just pick who they want so it's kind of yeah it counts 22 isn't it i think i think everybody's criteria is like yeah, even america has that yeah yeah even america has like um like i mean in technicality it's coach's decision. So like, I mean, they could have put Magnus on, if we had a team pursuit going to the Olympics, they could have put Magnus, they could have named Magnus to the long team as coach's selection. Like that was a coach's decision mm -hmm. without him riding a World Cup. Um, but anyways, back to Magnus though. Like, yeah, so for the Newport IP, yeah. Ashton Lammy, second in the world, <laughs> well, 40, 402 or something. Like who's come close to that? Or would you pick... The is this is one? Do you pick the old proven athlete or do you pick the young up and coming talent? Sure. They both Ashton needs races to perform because he's at the, at his peak. Um, this young kid needs opportunities to develop. Um, well, in I'm that sort gonna... of scenario, I'd be, you know, let's let's you know let's, let's this seems like let's I'll play race. devil's advocate here. Faith and, like, and you know, being that being that I'm not USA Cycling and USA Cycling hasn't even named anything. It's like in theory there's there's they're only focused on the olympics right now so absolutely at that, at that point at that point do you even send any of them like in which you i think you should because if you want to go to 2024 with a team pursuit you, you need to step up like it the best the only time you're going under four minutes is is at altitude okay so we need to get together we need to get in camps we need to get training well covid's put a halt in that but the argument is, is where do you put the money and how do you, how do you go? Okay, Ashton, I'm going to send you to go do a pursuit, but that's never going to win us a medal at the Olympic games. And then his immediate argument is like, well, that keeps me fresh because you know, you can fit me into a team pursuit when you decide you want to do a team pursuit. And the same for Magnus, right? It's like, Hey, when, when you decide you want to do a team pursuit, maybe I can fit in. Um, and that's his argument, right? But there is no team pursuit. We're not sending a team pursuit. So do you send two guys over there? And Ashton, yeah, Ashton can win, but what does it do? Can he? Doesn't he do anything Canna? for the game. <laughs> I don't know. On that training program. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, in fairness, you're not missing out on a lot by not going to Newport. Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it's a hot spot. The, the, there's you. better, better rooms to go to. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be wild because there's going to be, a, I think that's probably going to be one of the highest level of competition events this year, apart from the Olympics. Um, because if you look at the sort of the scheduling for a lot of team pursuit squads, um, bunch races, you know, guys are doing world tour as well. So it's it, where it fits in the calendar. It's straight after the classics in that sort of little bubble. Um, so I, and, but it's long enough before the Olympics that guys can peak at Newport and then have a second peak at um, the Olympics in Tokyo if that happens. Um, mm -hmm. So it will be an exciting event. We look oh, forward man. to seeing Ashton not win and get beaten by Ghana, who's going to go <laughs> three fifty eight. I hope not. On Newport. Yeah. Newport's He's go great. Fast. It's Newport's great. rapid. <laughs> yeah. We I was there the other day. Pretty nice. Remember the, the days when uh, KGF dropped a 411 IP? Uh, TP, rather. <laughs> Team suit. <Wow. laughs> after, after crashing. 
Nah, for Jurassic. Yeah. That was the days. Jeez. That's bad, that, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, like quick on Magnus numbers. So he did 306, 447 at altitude. Um, I think it's concrete, so what's his CRR up? So he probably did 471.4 watts. He claims he did 530. Uh, he reckons he did 530. That's what, that's what, so it, he hit a max power of uh, 1100 watts and maintained an average of 530 with a normalized of 545. Is he also okay, well, really he's not pretty he? Wow. So that puts his CDA above 0.2. He says, he, um, he says, but have you seen his bike? And I think he got, I think with the speed shop, extensions like you do testing to make sure speed bar, speed bar. yeah and so he 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 probably he shouldn't the... advertise those uh we've uh <coughs> those are the <laughs> extensions that are really expensive and haven't actually been proven are they um they're not very adjustable either are they daniel um, does anyone have any extensions that are adjustable and are proven <laughs> <laughs> Coach. <laughs> 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 All right, Sorry. just running some numbers on, just correcting for uh, the fact that it's probably it's a not really aerobic tank. All right, so he probably would have done a 411 if uh, if he'd done a full 4K there. there we See, go. that's what I was kind of thinking. I mean, I, I, you know, I just asked the questions. And let Who it... would you back? Ashton Lamy, 402. Was it 402.4? Or is it, you need to speak up a bit, buddy. I, I don't know. I don't remember, honestly. Okay. okay. Um, Big dog. It was faster Big than dog. Bolivia. I, I just remember went that. so fast that I couldn't remember. Um, <laughs> classic. Um, yeah, well, how did you get so fast, Ashton? Why did you find did you seven so seconds for me? In, in Berlin? Yeah. Where did that happen? Yeah. No, I, I think Johnny's spot on. I think doing like the training that I needed to do leading up to that and not having to worry about team pursuit efforts was huge. That was like a pretty massive difference, I would say. Well, it's also and stressful, that's... right? Because like with him, with Ashton, all the weight, like it was, the, the, the coach at the time was asking Ashton what we should be doing. And so in theory, it was almost as if we were getting coached by Ashton at some points. Wouldn't you say, <clears throat> or am I being? Ah. Uh... I mean, I you know I wouldn't say that, but like I'm I'm not gonna disagree with you. Like, yeah, that kind of it would explain sometimes. some of the performances. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Should we play guess the pacing. Lap two, 14-6. Lap three, 14-4. Team pursuit, individual pursuit. <laughs> Who's it, Ashton or the other guy? <laughs> is it a, isn't it a three 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 as well? Yeah, it's a it's a three thirty. Yeah, in Colorado, Concrete. yeah. Yeah. Okay, a, so yeah, Lambo, you did 403.644. Oh, I gave you an injustice. I gave you that second because I like you, buddy. Yeah. Put 10 okay. seconds into Plabani, which is pretty sweet, to be honest. He's so what good. would what would Ashton do for 3K based on his numbers? With oh. a tailwind. With oh. a tailwind. Oh. Based on those conditions. Yeah. That is interesting. That's a question. <laughs> and then I want to hear what do you do in Bolivia? And how many times have you been asked, Dan, for the spreadsheet? Like, has somebody tried to pay you for this this spreadsheet as a software yet? Um, there's nothing super special about it. It's just I think they have. Way. That's why he works for Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> He's paying That's significant amounts of money to go and make Denmark better. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, okay. everyone: they renamed Denmark Danmark when he arrived. <laughs> it's a niche Danish joke for you. Jesus Christ, Lambo, you must have done some silly numbers. All right, let's say you did 513. Um, that sounds God, about right. What, what do you reckon your FTP or CP is? No, oh, don't ask this question. You wouldn't know. I doubt he knows. I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> you know I don't know. And the best part Dude, is just... he's, not, he's not like not telling us because he doesn't want people to know. He <laughs> does not know. That's any clue. No, I have my FTP right now set at like 380. Oh, big boy. Someone's been right. training. Well, I don't know yeah. where that is. Yeah, it seems fine. Okay. Uh, hold on. God, I'm slow on the old spreadsheet today. Yeah, you need to speed up a bit, Dan. Just a little insight for the listeners. This is this is basically not a podcast. This is just shit talk. An insight into what it's like listening to us. Like if, if you if you lived in the KGF house for a year. This is it. Yeah, this is just a, a conversation. Year. This is um, just dinner. 
yeah, very much that conversation. Is... <laughs> John, get your laptop out. We've got some <laughs> random, random stuff. Johnny... Yeah, Johnny would be making a risotto right now as well. A risotto? Risotto. Sometimes um... I like to make a Spanish white rice. Fucking hell, Ashton. You would have gone pretty quick. In Bolivia. Put, put, well, no, the, on the. What about on the moon? <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I want to see the. Is the moon down it down it, there. Is that a calculate for the moon? The best part okay, of this yeah. is. Probably would have gone three flat. For a standing 3K. Where yeah. at? Like at the same altitude. Uh, at the same altitude as. Actually, sorry, no, you would have gone quicker than that. No, I don't got that wrong. Oh, in Berlin Daniel, or the... in Colorado? Yeah, all the way. But your CP drops, doesn't it? How much do you tend to lose? Ten percent, something like that. I no, don't think he'd lose that. that much because he's done a lot of altitude stuff. I, I would put yeah. him at four percent. Yeah, that's right, about well, right. I'd say. I'm just going to say you're going to lose thirty watts. So if you lost thirty watts, Jesus Christ! No, you would have gone real fast. Uh, you probably would have gone fifty-six, two fifty-six, something like that. Damn. That might get you selection just off this podcast. Yeah, I maybe <laughs> I don't know. But are you in that form now? <laughs> Am I what? Are you in that form now? You got pumped by Michael Hutchinson as with TT. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. First one I've ever done. Uh, I I, would, yeah, I don't know if I'm in that. Great. What's your excuse? Like surely you I just did... ride at my tempo and you should win. The TT? Yeah. I think Ashton has misunderstood what a CP is. I think I have too. Okay. Don't worry. But yeah, the, Ashton, the, la- the last time I saw that guy that beat you, who's walking with a stick. <laughs> oh. Yeah, literally. <laughs> oh, okay, that's grim. <laughs> right. That's how you win as whip. You break your leg. All right, guys. Well, that's all we got time for today. Uh, but- 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 wait, wait. What's my favorite coffee? Ask me for my coffee oh, no. order. Actually, no. I have I have two more questions. We're gonna ask we the go. favorite coffee order. Here we but go. I want to talk about the Olympic team pursuit. Do we actually? I don't really care to know Dan's insight. Actually, I do. As long as he won't be biased. Um, no. Who do no. we think's gonna win? Who do we win? Who do we think's gonna win the team pursuit uh, uh, at the Olympics if it even does happen? Twenty twenty one. Men's or women's? Men's. Men's. Denmark. <laughs> How could you pick anyone other than Denmark? Uh, Denmark? How could you pick anyone other than Denmark? Because if you look at the performances Italy produced and how badly they rode, I think there's there's definitely some low hanging fruit there. There's some young riders developing. Italy's um, gonna hire. Italy's I don't gonna think hire it's gonna be as close. Yeah, I'm very comfortable. Yeah, the da- the Danish have Nicholas back. Um, <clears throat> Um, uh, it's going to be tight. It's gonna, I, I think it's going to be tighter than everyone thinks. Hmm. Yeah, um, thirty-six to win, maybe a thirty-seven. It's going to be silly, like it's <laughs> silly, silly. Fuck. What honestly? <laughs> what do you think the time's going to be? I think it could Me? go sub forty. You think it goes oh. sub forty? What do you think, Ashton? Uh fuck, that's quick. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> sub forty. <laughs> Jesus, it will depend on uh, the structure of it because the for those that don't know, there's three rides on three days, so you know it's just it's you're basically as fresh as you can be in a team suit. So that'll open up a new avenue that people don't normally get. Because normally you do a qualifying on Thursday morning, and then you'll do a round one or a semi final in the morning of the next day, and then a final in the evening. So there's generally sort of three four hours between two rides, um, which is can be quite fatiguing, believe it or not. Um, whereas you're going to be fresh. So that will change how riders perform between races. That will change how much morale people will have. Um, but then also it's three days. I mean, I remember three, I've done three track races in three days and the third day is a, ooh, need me sleepy slugs. Um, but um, it's going to be interesting is all I'm going to say. But interestingly, the girls isn't. The girls is a traditional format. Really? Because the girls just can do it in two days because they're better? Or I don't really get it. It seems odd to me. Hmm. Who do we think? Who do you think are going to win with the women? Uh, GB. Sorry, USA. Um, I think it would have been close with Daigo. I don't know what equipment package the USA's have, 
I had some insight, but not full insight. But um, with Daigot's leg, I just shram, mate. She might get real aero. Yeah, but the thing is, I would um, I don't know how bad the injury is and how quickly she's recovering and all that. But I mean, ultimately, I think it is going to have an effect versus if she was fresh as a daisy. Um, she seems good at coming back, but it's yeah, it depends. She, I just she think those um, injured all the time. I am quite biased. But, um, it also, also depends if Rafa put out any emails slagging her off like the day of the Olympics just to get some extra PR. Ooh, but that probably wouldn't go down very well. I'd also like to say that uh, a member of the GB Women's Endurance Squad is currently giving me evils. Um, I think the, the GB women will win because they are very, very good at cycling. Especially you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to get punched later. <laughs> All right. Um, well, now, now, now for Johnny's most favorite segment of the day, because he's obviously thought about it's this. coffee and van chats with John Croom. <laughs> What's your so, coffee, John? And so, what, what, what coffee would you have? So you guys can think about this. Name a coffee that you would have with a person, whether they're dead or alive, and why would you have that coffee with that person? So, Johnny, what coffee would you have, and who's that person that you would have coffee with? Uh, I would have a flat white with the original four founding members of KGF and Medicordy. And we'd have a lot of fun. Right on. I would, I would expect him to add five people um, instead of just the one that I asked. And just be like, I'd have it with these five people. You know what, John? I would, I would pick you. I would uh, pick you. Yeah. <laughs> and those other five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jacob, let's hear it, man. Are you ready? Who's ready? If, if I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Okay, yeah. Sweet. I would go for a Cortado because All it right. makes me sound like I know my coffee because that's what I've been drinking while I've been out here. Excuse so the Spanish. No, we haven't. We've been drinking dirt water. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the cafes, when I've been having tantrums and not doing my training, I've been having that because unfortunately, the Spanish coffee isn't the best. You definitely need to have a lot of milk with it yeah, to make yeah. sure it tastes okay. And there's no caffeine um, in it either. So you need to like have a caffeine pill chaser. <laughs> and then. I would probably go for the uh, Mr. Lance Armstrong because uh, Lance Armstrong. wearing his wristband. That's a good one. Lance would also be at my, my, my coffee meeting. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yeah. we'd just shred him. I reckon all five of us could get him. Well, six of us. Sorry, John. All six of us would get him. That'd be banner. Yeah. So I want the KGF boys, Medi, John Croom, and Lance. <laughs> not, not Ashton, though. No. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, literally, Johnny's invitational list has been opened, and the only person that's not open to is Ashton. So that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> to right. be fair, I've I've had coffee with Ashton. He takes like forty minutes making it, and like you got to uh, grind the beans and, and like turn the gravy <laughs> in, and you got your filter, and you got to wash it in like condensed milk. Oh, yeah, it's not. <laughs> It, it's, it's a 30 minute process um he actually made me one back in the day um and you could tell like the, you know like when someone's really proud of what they've done and they're like he's gonna like this <laughs> and they're staring at you while you sip on it i i think i think all of us i make my coffee like that as well so mm. I'll, I'll take the brunt of it i can't do the johnny just like pour stuff into a french press and just like beat the shit out of it. <laughs> he's like jerking off the french press to try to just get as much caffeine as he can it is scarring emotionally to watch him make coffee that's been out for the last two weeks here. Jesus every morning Christ. i'm like what's he doing why is he going up and down with it? i'm pumping the morale into the coffee <laughs> <laughs> all right dan uh geez i keep mixing up uh i quite like double espresso at the moment so i'd go with uh, that uh who should i have it with other than myself um, I'd have it with the four Dan Binghams in my team suit team. Yeah, watch. <laughs> we can all talk about how good we are. Mm, who do I like talking to? Gosh. I don't know. It seems like you you don't make very many friends on Twitter. So, no, I'd say off that. Like, I've made it a habit for like the last twelve months to not engage in arguments on Twitter, and it's made like general life balance a lot better. I don't oh, have to waste good. four hours in an evening making a spreadsheet to prove someone wrong. Um, <laughs> Holy shit. Time off that now. <laughs> uh, yeah, who would you pick? I don't know. I literally don't know. Um, I would go like, with your uh, girlfriend if you can't think of anyone, Dan. I have coffee with her every day. Dead or alive? <laughs> someone, 
It can even be dead. She's still alive. <laughs> or alive. <laughs> what? You can anybody. You can pick anybody. You dead can pick or a dead alive. person. Yes. Uh, like Colin Chapman, and everyone will go, "Who's he?" Mm. All right, he was the Lotus motor racing dude. Man knows his car winner. Boom. Mm. All right. Good engineer. Very good engineer. All right. All right, Ashton, I'm kind of offended right you didn't invite me. Oh, you've got Ashton. Sorry, sorry, buddy. <laughs> uh, I'd go one of the the fancy hand ground coffees, just a black regular black coffee that okay. Johnny loves making fun of. Um, I don't, I don't know who I'd have coffee with. You kind of got me stoked talking about your ride with George Hincappy. I think that'd be fun. He seems like yeah. a cool dude. Yeah, he's he's a good. Dad. What ride? Isn't that a secret? A secret ride. Just, <laughs> I don't know. How much fun would a, a night out with like Lance and his buddies? So like Lance, George Hincapie, the rest of them. Um, Floyd Landis. Floyd like, Landis. Even the guys that funny. they've had fallen outs with. Yeah. yeah Tyler like, all of them the and all of the KGF dudes. Um, all together in a party. How amazing would that be? <laughs> we'd have, we'd have a lot of fun. That would be wild. Right. I don't know who said I pick Floyd's or, da- or Lance's. I think I'd probably just play the, like the Sturro and try and get him to have a fight. Which was I, I, I vote Floyd over Lance, definitely. He's a more nice, genuine guy. He's yeah. Good. I used to really like his podcast, but there's just too much. Um, sorry, I should be advertising everyone else's. But like, it, it was a nice novelty to start with, but I just think he's a bit thick now. Um, it's disappointing. <laughs> I think that's one of those like never meet your heroes. <laughs> um, right on well on that note guys thank you guys so much for tuning into this podcast um if we didn't get canceled on this podcast maybe we'll do it again another time but uh yeah this can't this podcast might have canceled us completely so perfect well thanks guys see you next time